Let's take a look at how we actually configure these on the switch. So I have a putty session that I'm going to open up, and I'm going to use the rollover cable to connect to the console port of my switch. So I'm going to use a serial port here, open that up, and uh, this, this switch already has the base configuration that we saw how to do in the switch configuration video. So I've already put a password on all of my access mechanisms, including the two user mode access methods, the console port and Telnet slash SSH, which are the VTY ports. And then I've also put a password on privileged mode. So when I type enable or EN, it asks me for a password as well. So let's take a look first and see what VLANs are currently configured on this switch. Now, we've already talked about this a bit in previous videos. Routers come out of the box blank. We are unable to use a router right out of the box. We have to put some configuration on it to make it work. And the administrator has to tell it what we want to do with the device in order to make it work. Switches, on the other hand, a Cisco switch we can pull out of the box just like we can a consumer grade switch from a big box store. We can pull that switch out of the box, plug it in, plug clients into it, and begin using it. However, to take advantage of the advanced features like securing it with passwords and configuring VLANs, that's when we actually have to go onto the router and begin configuration tasks. So the router is set up out of the box to work by default. If I issue the command show VLAN, show VLAN will show me all of the VLANs currently configured on this device. And if you notice, I haven't touched the VLANs yet at all in any of my configurations, but yet we have VLANs configured on the device. And the reason for that is because we have to have a default VLAN in order to make the switch operational. So in order to have it so we can pull the switch out of the box and make it operational, we have to have a VLAN configured on here. That VLAN is VLAN 1. So VLAN 1 is always the default VLAN, and VLAN 1 will be what all of our switch ports are assigned to by default out of the box. In a future video, we're going to take a look at why this is a major security concern and why we should change it. But for the time being, let's just get an understanding of VLANs so that we can configure them and observe them operating. As we progress through the course, we're going to see other applications of VLANs and how we can manage and use this and do it correctly. I want to introduce the concept first, though, because VLANs are, are a surprisingly difficult concept to grasp for newbies out there that haven't encountered it before. So if I do show VLAN, like I said here, it shows us my VLAN database. By default, VLAN 1 is the only VLAN configured, and that's not necessarily true. I'll mention this in a second. And all the ports, though, are put into VLAN 1, regardless of other VLANs configured, as the base configuration of the switch, the default base configuration of the switch. There are some other VLAN numbers listed here that are default. That's 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. These are for ancient network types that we don't really use anymore. FDDI, FIDI, Fiber Distributed Data Interface, is a 100 megabit connection over fiber optics for servers. So we used to use fiber optic connections to connect to servers to get a 100 megabit connection. All right, Token Ring. Token Ring was an IBM protocol used at layer 2 from about 1985 probably began its decline shortly after it started in 85. And to give you an idea, I think by like the early 90s, Ethernet was implementing in a month what Token Ring by IBM was implementing in its lifetime. So Ethernet just took off in, in uh, leaps and bounds relative to Token Ring. Token Ring may have been a better technology at the time, but Ethernet was substantially cheaper. So Token Ring is an old, ancient IBM technology that we don't use anymore. It just lingers as a default VLAN in our config. So, and then there's just TRNet. We really don't need to worry about any of these VLANs. We're not able to actually use those VLAN numbers. That's okay. We just skip over 1,000, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we have ability to use here up to 4,096 VLANs. We just can't use VLANs 1,002, 3, 4, and 5. Big deal. And we actually never want to use the default VLAN.
So we'll, like I said, we'll learn how to reconfigure that in a later video. For the moment, let's look at how to configure VLANs. So I did show VLAN, and that shows me this database, and I keep talking about the VLAN database. What the heck is that? Well, we actually create a file on our switch. And the file that's created on our switch contains the VLAN database. So if I issue the command show flash, all right, remember flash is flash memory. It's where we store our operating system on routers and switches. And on switches, it's actually where we store the file startup-config. And it's also where we store the file vlan.dat. Now, if we notice when I do show flash, I can see that I don't see a startup-config and I don't see a vlan.dat. So what's going on, Ross? You're lying to us. No, actually, I'm not. First of all, the startup-config is actually stored on a switch in a file called config.txt. So when I do show flash, what I'm doing is I'm showing you flash memory here. Inside a flash memory, this is just like the flash drive, a flash USB drive that you plug into your computer, right? This is just stored right on the motherboard of our switch. And inside of here, I have a file that's called config.txt. Now, config.txt is actually startup-config. So we call the startup config file, we call that config-txt on our switch. And we store that in flash. If we do the command copy run start, it's going to copy to config.txt. But now vlan.dat is not here. So let's, let's find out how we create the VLAN database. By default, these entries are in the VLAN database. We're going to create our own. So we go config t. And now what we can do is we can create VLANs from configuration prompt. So VLANs are a layer 2 function. They're a broadcast domain right? VLANs are a broadcast domain. To configure one, I issue the command VLAN, and then I tell it what number I'm going to configure. So here, VLAN 20 for our server farm. And I can give that a name. And the name is just a description. It's not mandatory. It just helps me later on know that VLAN 20 is my server farm. And then I can create VLAN 10. And VLAN 10 is going to be my client devices. So I'll say VLAN 10 is clients. If I exit now, I can do show VLAN again. Let's do that whole command, show VLAN. And now, under my VLANs, I have VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. 10 is for clients, 20 is for server farm. But notice that for VLAN 20, under the ports here, there's no ports listed. So for VLAN 10 and 20, they're not assigned to any ports. Let's take a jump back and look at Flash again. If I do show Flash, now since I've created my own VLANs, this file shows up here, vlan.dat. The vlan.dat is the VLAN database. The VLAN database is what stores any VLANs beyond my default VLANs. In this case, 10 and 20. So, if I do delete vlan.dat, that will erase the file called vlan.dat from flash memory. If I erase that and do show vlan, well, my vlans are still here. And that's because my vlans are actually stored in RAM while I'm working on a powered on switch. If I were to reboot this switch, we would find out that clients and server farm would disappear. Let's do that. It's asking me if I, if I want to save my configuration. Uh, I'm going to say yes. Now that may... I'm going to say no here. Let's see what happened here, actually. Okay, so when I can when I did the reload command up here, it asked me it said system configuration has been modified. Do you want to save it? Yes or no? Yeah, I saved it because I did make some configuration changes earlier that I had not saved apparently. Then it said, "Do you want to reload?" And I said no here. And then I issued the show flash command. And what I wanted to find out is, does the vlan.dat file get saved 
when we issue the copy run start command. Because essentially, this statement here, this question, it's asking us, do you want to enter the copy run start command? Do you want to copy your running configuration to startup configuration? And I said yes. But what that didn't do is it didn't save any VLAN information. So let's reload the switch now and wait for this to come back. So it's going to take a second for the switch to reload. While that's happening, we can talk a little bit more about the VLANs and how they're configured on here. So what we're going to do next after our router reboots, we're going to find out a couple things. One is that our VLAN database file is going to be gone, and all we're going to have left on our router is the default VLANs that are configured. So it should be just VLAN 1 and nothing else. So we'll have to reset up our VLANs. And then the second step that we need to do is we need to go into each switch port and manually configure the assignment of each switch port to a proper VLAN. So let's uh, press return to get started here after my switch has rebooted. I'll enter my password, go to privileged mode, and then do show VLAN. So we want to see our VLAN database. And sure enough, because the VLAN.dat file is deleted, it is not there, we come back with our default set of VLANs. All right, just VLAN 1 and then the old antiquated VLANs that we never use. Let's go back and configure VLANs then. Let's take a look at our flash memory. Flash memory, we still don't have a VLAN.dat file there. Config T to go into configuration mode. And I'll enter in my VLANs again. Clients for VLAN 10. And I don't need to actually exit out of my VLAN config prompt to move to a new VLAN. So I can just enter VLAN 20. And that will let me configure VLAN 20 then. This I can say name is server farm. Ooh, I cannot have a space in my name apparently. So name is server farm. There we go. Now we don't have to manually save the VLAN database file. We only have to worry about the VLAN.dat file, that VLAN database file if we want to get rid of all of the VLANs on our device. If we want to get rid of one VLAN, let's say I type VLAN 31 on accident, that will show up in my VLAN.dat, but I can just issue the command no VLAN 31, and it'll actually remove it from my configuration. So VLAN 31 would add it, no VLAN 31 would remove it. Okay, let's take a look at my VLAN information again. So I'll do a show VLAN. And I remember I'm using that do command here to escape one prompt back to my privilege mode prompt so I can issue the show VLAN command and then come back to configuration without having to exit out of configuration mode, issue the show VLAN command, and then go back into configuration mode. So show VLAN, I now have my client's VLAN and my server farm VLAN, they're not assigned to any ports. Let's go and assign them to ports. To do that, I issue the interface command and then the switch port number that I want to configure. So let's say I want to configure switch port F01 to be on my client VLAN. Once I issue the interface F01 command, I then issue the switch port command. Then I say access, switch port access, VLAN, and then the VLAN I want to configure it for. So switch port access VLAN 10, and press enter. If I issue the do show VLAN command now, what I should see is that every other switch port is in VLAN 1, and then I have one switch port now in VLAN 10. F01 is now in the client's VLAN. And if you notice now, switch port F01 is not in VLAN 1 anymore. All right? So let's do another one. So do intf0 slash 2. Switch port access VLAN 20. If I issue show VLAN now, now we'll see that switch ports 1 and 2 are not on VLAN 1, but now switch port 2 is assigned to VLAN 20 for our server farm. We can keep doing this, intf0 slash 3. 
Let's say we want that on VLAN 10 again. ITF0 slash 4. Say we want that on VLAN 20. Oh, my goodness. That's completely wrong, isn't it? That's not how I configure a VLAN. On the interface, I don't say interface VLAN F03, VLAN 20, or VLAN 10. I say, let's do that again. Interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 3. Switch port access VLAN 10. When I issue VLAN 10 here, all it does is it moves me into the configuration prompt to configure a VLAN. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm configuring my switch port interface. So when I typed this command, it was a valid command and it switched my prompt. Did not give me an error message, but it was not the correct command at all. So the correct command there is switch port access VLAN and then the number. Interface fast Ethernet 04. Let's say that's also on VLAN 10. If I do a show VLAN now, we're going to find out that I have switch ports 1, 3, and 4 in VLAN 10, and I have switch port 2 in VLAN 20. Now let's say that I just got a whole load of servers in. I, let's say I got five of them in, and I want to hook those up to ports 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. All right, five servers on ports 20 through 24. Well, I can quickly assign VLAN 20 to those five interfaces by using a nifty little trick called the interface range command. So the interface range command now lets me specify the first interface that I want to configure, int fast ethernet 0 slash 20, and then I put a dash or a comma, right? I can put a comma if I want to list them out individually, so I can say comma F0 slash 21, or I can put a dash and say F0 slash 24 to say F0 slash 20 through F0 slash 24. Oh my goodness, it didn't work. Let's find out why. Holy mackerel. Let's find out what I need to put in here. Oh, it's looking for the last port number of the range that I want to configure, which is going to be 24. So all I need to do there is say range F0 slash 20 dash 24. And that's saying I want to configure interfaces from F0 slash 20 through F0 slash 24. If I wanted to add extra interfaces on there, I could use the comma if they weren't in the range. So if I needed to configure 20, 22, 24, and 26, I could use the comma to configure that. Here, though, I'm going to configure ports F0 20 through 24 all at once. I then issue the switch port access VLAN 20 command. If I do a show VLAN now, what we'll find out is that I just moved ports 20 through 24 into VLAN 20 and taken them out of VLAN 1. What we'll find out now is if that we plug in our servers to VLAN 20 and our clients to VLAN 10, our clients and our servers will not be able to talk to each other because they're on two separate broadcast domains. We'll have to add in a router in order to get the communication to flow between them. Now, we're going to build upon this concept of VLANs. Next, we're going to introduce the concept of VLAN trunks, which allow us to transfer multiple VLANs over the same link. And then next, we're going to cover a concept called inter-VLAN routing, which actually lets us route in between the VLANs in a really nifty way. So thanks for watching this video on VLANs and configuring them, and I look forward to seeing you in future train signal videos. Thank you.